Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the fourth lesson of theory of flight. We're going to talk about the design of the wing on an airplane. The wing platform is the shape of the wing when we view it from the top. This is opposed to an airfoil, which is the view of the wing when we chop it and look at it from the side. So for the platform, we can have rectangular wings, tapered wings, uh, swept wings. We see on a lot of jets, delta wings, some jets. Elliptical wings are actually very efficient wings. They're difficult to manufacture using metals, uh, but you did see them in Second World War airplanes that were made out of wood. Some definitions to get started. The fan is the distance from the wingtip to wingtip. The cord is the distance from leading edge to trailing edge. In wings that are tapered, the uh, cord, or in that case, it's called a mean aerodynamic cord, is the mean or average cord uh, on that wing and the area is the span multiplied by the cord it's given in square feet the aspect ratio of a wing is the wing span divided by the cord a high aspect ratio wing has a lower induced drag but there are structural disadvantages such as a higher bending moment in the spar a lower aspect ratio has a lower bending moment in the spar but has a higher and has a higher roll rate here are two examples a glider one has an aspect ratio of 33 and a half. You notice the massively long span and very narrow cord, whereas the Piper Cherokee has a short uh, wing. It has a, a short span and a, narrow, and, a, and a wide cord. Airplanes want to be streamlined to reduce drag. We can see different uh, objects with different amount of streamlining, the disc, obviously has a high amount of drag compared to a teardrop pattern which has a little drag the camber of a wing is the amount of curvature in a wing if we look uh, here at the uh, cord line from leading edge to trailing edge okay we have a thickness okay and then we have this mean camber line this is actually the amount of curvature in the wing and then above and below this camber line, most wings that we encounter, the distance is actually the same amount above and below. You see here and here, it's the same. And then as we go back, it's the same here and here. And we can actually define a lot of these airfoils mathematically. It's uh, two different equations. One is the camber line and then as a function, so the distance above the cord line above the cord line is a function of uh, percent cord as well as the thickness as a function of percent cord so we can define the airfoil you can look up naca four digit airfoil equations and uh, you can just type it in there and you can see the big long equations but it can be done when we talk about laminar flow we are talking about a flow that is uh, smooth it's not turbulent and often the wings we have laminar flow wings where you have the maximum thickness farther back so the laminar to, to uh, turbulent flow transition point is further aft the uh, uh, laminar flow wings typically have lower drag but have more aggressive stall characteristics let's talk about dihedral and anhedral dihedral is where the wing tips are higher than the wing root Aircraft uh, have this dihedral to improve stability. Conversely, anhedral is where the wingtips are lower. And so this would be done to improve maneuverability. It's often done on high wing cargo aircraft where you have a significant weight in the aircraft and uh, a lot of keel effect, what's called, just like a keel in a sailboat. And so you need to make the aircraft less stable to make it more maneuverable. Another design feature in a wing, we have washout and wash in. A washout is where there is a lower angle of incidence at the tip than the root. So the wing will stall at the root first to provide aileron control during a stall. Wash in is a higher angle of incidence at the wing tip than the wing root. I have no idea why you would ever have wash in. Here's a picture of an aileron on Cessna aircraft. Cessna aircraft have actually quite pronounced washout where the wing twists. It's supposed to do that. And often you'll see like a new student, they will uh, 
do their walk around and then come to their instructor and be like, instructor, instructor, the, the look at the aileron, the aileron is twisted. And yes, it indeed it is twisted. The reason it's twisted is because you have to have the aileron match up with the wing tip because the wing is twisted. So that's how they had to build the aileron. So take a look next time you're flying your Cessna. Here's a picture of it on a Cessna 180. Uh, you can definitely see the aileron being twisted. That's from the uh, washout. Let's talk about slots and flats. Slots and flats are both leading edge devices that redirect the airflow smoothly over the wing at high angles of attack. Slots are not adjustable and flats come out manually at high angles of attack. So uh, let's take a look here. Here is a slot. The air at high angle of attack would go in there. So let's say at a regular wing high angle of attack, we have a lot of turbulence. And then if we have a slot or a slat, it redirects the air down. On the bottom here is a, looks like a home built uh, Zen Air 701, I think. This is a slat. I uh, can't remember if the, the Zen Air has slats or slots, but the air goes in there. And then you look at the 737, obviously has slats. They, they come in and out together with the flaps for high angles of attack. On the left, we have a stall fence, a picture of a stall fence on a twin otter that provides a span-wise or prevents span-wise flow. On the right, we have what's called a stall strip. And instead of having washout where we want the root to stall first before the wing tip, you make these stall strips, just disturbs the airflow just a little bit at high angles of attack and makes that part of the wing root stall first. So we still have controllability on the ailerons. A lot of high performance aircraft, low drag aircraft have spoilers. These spoilers decrease the lift. Uh, they it requires, uh, it does this. What you can do is they create more drag, decrease lift. You end up, because you have decreased lift, you have to raise the nose a little bit and raise the nose higher angle of attack. And therefore you also have higher drag that way. They're used on high speed aircraft to increase the rate of descent while maintaining speed restrictions. So on jets often, uh, air traffic control will say descend right away, but we can't have you exceed 250 knots. We have to pull out your speed brakes to uh, slow you down. Or they're called speed brakes in aircraft, but uh, they are spoilers. Same thing. It's an important topic. Wing flaps. Most light aircraft have wing flaps. Wing flaps operate by increasing the wing camber, thereby increasing lift and drag. So if we think about it, here's it's quite a bit more camber here than if we didn't have this wing flap. We have a number of different types of wing flaps. We have plane flaps, split flaps, slotted flaps, which you will find on your Cessna uh, series aircraft and Fowler flaps. Sorry, I'm wrong. The, uh, the Cessna aircraft have Fowler flaps uh, and then sometimes there are slotted flaps as well. So Fowler flaps is where the wing area is also increased because that, that flap comes out and down. So, uh, you will notice that it also increases lift and drag, and therefore, uh, let's say you have a maximum performance takeoff you have to do, you'll only do that on aircraft that have sufficient power to overcome that drag penalty. Let's talk about canards. Uh, canard is a wing on the nose of an aircraft similar in design to a horizontal stabilizer, but it provides lift as opposed to a downward force. Okay, there's some advantages to canards. First off, the main wing, it's almost impossible to have them stall because you have a higher angle of incidence on the canard. So the canard will stall first, the nose will drop, reducing the angle of attack on the wing. So you can't really stall them. The big disadvantage to canards is they have a considerably longer takeoff distance. The reason is that you need a, a sufficient speed in order to gain lift to raise that nose up. Whereas on a vert or a horizontal stabilizer, you just need a downward force to bring the nose up. And once you have enough downward force, increase the angle of attack and the aircraft will, uh, will become airborne. Let's review. The wing platform is the view of the wing looking from the top. Wing cords, the distance from leading edge to trailing edge. The aspect ratio is the span divided by the cord. The camber is the curvature of the wing. The washout is the lower angle of attack at the tips, sorry, lower angle of incidence at the tips to maintain roll authority in a stall and make the stall less drastic. 
Spoilers decrease lift and increase drags, and flaps increase lift and increase drag. The wing has a span of 36 feet and a quarter 72 inches. Its wing area and aspect ratio is. So first thing, let's convert it all to the same units. 72 inches is six feet. So 36 times six is 216 square feet. We take the span divided by the core to get the aspect ratio. So 36 divided by six is six. Correct answer is C. An airplane will, with washout will A, stall at lower speed than a plane without washout, B, stall at a higher speed than a plane without washout, C, have a more dramatic stall than a plane without washout. So we know that one's not correct uh, because it, it has a less dramatic stall and is more likely to spin if the pilot inputs aileron during the stall. No, that has nothing to do with what we're saying. So does it stall at a lower airspeed or a higher airspeed? So, I mean, washout generally is a good thing because we maintain controllability throughout the stall. However, the stall speed will be a bit higher because the angle of incidence at the wing root is higher and less at the wing tip. So we're going to start the stall um, a bit, just a knot or two uh, above where we uh, normally would if we didn't have it. But it is a much more it's a safer stall, it's less dramatic, and we maintain aileron authority. Here's an understanding question. Light aircraft with more power, such as a Cessna 182, direct pilots to take off from runways with an obstacle with 20 degrees of flap. So if you need to clear a, uh, an obstacle clearance takeoff, you need 20 degrees of flap. Lower powered aircraft, such as a Cessna 150, direct pilots to take off without flaps. Why could this be? So a Cessna 182 has larger flaps, making them more effective. No, I don't think that this is correct uh, relative to their wing size. It's about the same. Uh, B, a Cessna 182 is lighter than a Cessna 150, reducing the need for flaps. Uh, no, uh, 182 uh, is heavier than the 150. That's why it has more power. That was stated in the, uh, in the question. C, a Cessna 182 is heavier than the 150 and therefore requires more lift to clear an obstacle. Well, it's kind of right, but it's kind of missing the point of the, of the question. Uh, but let's go D. A Cessna 182 has more power, allowing the aircraft to overcome the drag associated with flaps extended. So D is the correct answer. And the reason it's the correct answer is because a Cessna 150 has very little power. And remember that your rate of climb is a function of excess power thrust above drag. And so if you don't have a lot of thrust, you really need to minimize drag to get that rate of climb. Whereas the Cessna 182, even though the drag is uh, higher, and if we recall previous few lessons ago with the lift drag ratio, it does increase the lift and it does increase the drag as well, but the lift drag ratio is increased, but we do have the excess power above the amount of drag uh, to increase the rate of climb to a greater extent. Okay, the advantages to an aircraft with canard is A, a negligible stall. So that's correct because the canard stalls first. Let's continue reading. B, shorter takeoff distance. Well, that's incorrect. We know it's a longer takeoff distance. C, requires a smaller wing than a conventional aircraft. So let's unpack this, think about it a bit more. So remember in a regular wing, uh, conventional configuration, we have a horizontal stabilizer that provides a downward force. So this downward force reduces the net lift vector. However, in a canard, the canard provides lift in the front. So if we wanted the same amount of total lift, we could actually get away with a smaller wing using the canard. So A and C are correct, so that makes D correct. That concludes this lesson on the design of the wing. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson on theory of flight.